This is worst case scenario Kitsuke, or how to put on a kimono when you have almost none of the tools you need. I have a kimono, a tsukeobi, and two lengths of ribbon, about two and a half meters long each, but you should choose lengths that work for you. It's wise to start with a base of simple thin clothing. This will protect you if your skirt falls open, and protect the kimono from your sweat. I like wearing a straight maxi dress with a collarless blouse. Place the kimono over your shoulders. You'll notice that it is probably way too long for you. This is deliberate. This means that you can adjust it to suit your height. You'll do this by holding the skirt up and then wrapping it around yourself. You want to angle the sides up so that the skirt naturally inclines to wrap around you. The tighter you wrap it around your legs the better, since gravity and movement will always pull it away from you. Take one of the lengths of ribbon and use it to tie the skirt in place. You want to wrap the ribbon around itself so that none of it hangs down. Now we come to my favorite part. Take a look at the underarm areas. There are spaces here so that you can put your hands in like I'm doing. Then you run your hands along the inner edge so that it smooths out over the top of the tie you just made. Look at how smooth and different it is from before. It is important that you only straighten the top half now. Try not to change the skirt. This fold we have just created around the hips is called ohashori. Now pay attention to the collar. Many novice kimono wearers mistakenly think that kimono collars are meant to face out the way western shirt collars do. But actually, you want to make sure that all of it is folded inward, so that none of the inside shows at all. You also want to make sure that the fronts are even, by making these two little folds on the collar equal. It's also important to position the back of the collar away from your neck. The further you put it back, the more ventilation you will get. So I like to put my collars very far back in warmer weather. Cross the collars over at the front and tie them down with the other ribbon. I like to check my breathing as I do this, so that I can be sure that I haven't done it too tightly. Again, I like to tuck the ends of the ribbon around itself so that it doesn't dangle. But here it's less pivotal, since the obi will hide it. Since these easy obi are sometimes very short, I find it's best to place them directly onto the front of me, so that the best part of the design is at the front. Then I guide the back flaps across my back so that they sit on top of each other if there is an overlap. Then I bring the cords around to the front and I pull a little to make sure that the obi is the right level of tightness for my taste. Then I tie it off and tuck it in. Since you've dressed without adequate tools, you'll almost certainly find that throughout the day you'll need to adjust your outfit. You might want to tighten or loosen the lower strap so that your skirt doesn't slip or get too tight. You can do that by lifting the ohashori fold we just made earlier and retying. Using the ohashori, it's possible to adjust the left side of your skirt so that it points inward again, or to adjust the left side of your collar. You can also reach your hand inside the top layer of the ohashori to reach the lower layer and adjust the right side of the collar and the skirt. This is one of the reasons I like ohashori so much. After all this work, you are now dressed and ready to go! This outfit is good for casual parties and gatherings, but I strongly recommend you do not wear it for high formality, especially within Japan.